I've just changed your microphone setting. Oh, yeah. You had something genuinely called Big Bottom switched on. Oh, I've turned it off. that explains a lot. <laughs> Hang on. Was it just mine that had that saying? I don't know. See, mine doesn't have any. Does yours have that? I don't know. No. How I, come mine just has that? I haven't got Big Bottom or Oral Exciter. <laughs> oh, good. We're recording this one at a different time of the day. We normally do this in the evening mm. with a, a beverage. And a baby in... sleeping next door. Yeah, but the baby's gone to nursery. Have we done the intro yet? Yeah, that was the intro. Oh, welcome, by the way, to the Naked Game podcast. I mean, surely you'll now know. Now with less big bottles. Surely, no, <laughs> you'll know by now that you're listening to the Naked Gaming Podcast, uh, with me, Big Bottom uh, Lee, and... Uh... No oral excitement, Chris. <laughs> It's going to be one of those days. We've got a lot uh, to cover, though, on the podcast. This time, here's some games. Helldivers 2. Tomb Raider Remastered. Silent Hill, The Short Message. And Mario vs. Donkey Kong. We've got to start, though, with a bit of the old news from Lee. Now, there's a lot of news, so I hope you're ready for this. Okay. So Disney has announced a multi-year deal which involves putting $1.5 billion into Epic Games. They'll partner to create expansive and open games and entertainment universe connected to Fortnite. The press blurb says the new persistent universe will offer a multitude of opportunities for consumers to play, watch, shop and engage with content, characters and stories from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, Avatar and much more. Next up, they'll need regulatory approval, so watch this space. Sony has announced it'll lay off 8% of PlayStation employees globally, amounting to approximately 900 people. In addition to cuts in the US and Japan, the gaming giant said this would mean closing PlayStation's London studio entirely. Sony boss Jim Ryan called the move sad news and said it was a difficult day at our company. Also, EA is cancelling an upcoming Star Wars game and says it'll lay off 5% of its employees globally. That's approximately 670 people. The game, which was in early development, would have been the first person shooter set in the Star Wars universe. The firm said the streamlining would deliver deeper, more connected experiences for fans. Pokemon Legend Z2A will launch for Nintendo Switch in 2025. The news of the release date has reignited speculation that the game could be an early title for the rumoured Nintendo Switch 2. Now, back in 2019, Lady Gaga tweeted, What's Fortnite? Now, five years later, she's just headlined the Fortnite Festival, an in game concert based on her Chromatica tour. Oh, and she managed to spell it correctly this time too. And four games that were formerly exclusive to Microsoft will soon be available on rival consoles. Hi-Fi Rush and pirate game Sea of Thieves are coming to Sony's PS5. Meanwhile, the narrative adventure game Pentiment and co-op game Grounded will also be on PS5, as well as Nintendo Switch. Which leads us to ask the question, why would you buy an Xbox? Except for Starfield, of course. I mean, it was quite a lot of news. You put <sighs> you put some extra in Flipping there. Flipping heck. It's, you you literally created a rod for your own back. Literally, news was breaking. Wow. Hot off the press. Are you messing with my bot my <laughs> big bottom? Your bottom you need your big bottom back on. <laughs> Stop kidding around. Snake. Snake There's quite a lot of games to review this month, but there's two of them which you might have noticed we didn't mention at the beginning. One yeah. of them is Pal World. Oh. Which I'm surprised that that you're not crazy about because it's Pokemon with guns. They what? Describe that. Why didn't we review that one? Because uh, I asked them for the game and they, they ignored me completely, which is fine. But it's also been in early access and there's a few problems no, with it here and there. It's so fine, guys. You want to play it either way. You know what? We're just not going to review it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. I, I really got a hissy fit and I'm just throw, throwing my toys this out the This sounds front. amazing. So that instead of Pokemon, they're called... Pals, okay, and that's why it's called Pal World, mm. uh, and it's got Fortnite's graphics, 
Wow. And you're building a base and you're using the, the pals that look absolutely identical to Pokemon to, to like water the crops. And then you've got another one which is like lifting heavy stuff. Ooh, ooh. have you got to catch them all? No, that legally you're not allowed to because right. there's, there's a court case. <laughs> I think the Pokemon people are investigating whether it's like too similar. Well, I was about to say, can they can they do that? Can... Smoke him on. <laughs> got to... Avoid them all. Yeah, yeah. you got to. You start off with 150, and you've got to get rid of them. They've got a rifle in their hands. Well, yeah, I think that's the you thing. You shoot me, and I'll shoot you. So I'm getting to this. Power world. <laughs> uh, but it's 32 player multiplayer, which it does look really fun. So we're going to dig into it, but it, it's mostly one that's played on the, the PC. So we're. I'm thinking about it. So when you say 32 <clears throat> player. Multiplayer. It's like co-op sort of thing. Is it like um, Fall Guys? No, because you're not really you're not really knocking each other out. You're all sort of playing in this world together. Oh, okay. So it's more like co-op cooperative. Right. But anyway, it's twenty five quid. It's interesting, but we I haven't done it yet. But we're we're looking into that. And the other one, Suicide Squad, <gasps> looks appalling. Oh, what? Everyone's just giving it the worst reviews ever. And once again, I emailed them, and they didn't give me a copy of the game. And I was like, well, if it's that bad, then. Sorry, <laughs> uh, but it's an open world looter shooter, which is a very boring gameplay loop. Uh, so that's available, but you know we're kind of. I wouldn't avoid. bother. But the real games. We'll start with Hell Divers Two. The Federation of Super Earth, keeping managed democracy safe with the lives of our heroes, protecting freedom from tyranny with the gentle touch of an iron fist. But liberty's enemies march ever closer. Together, we must take back control of freedom. Together for managed democracy. Together for victory. Together for liberty. Together for liberty. Together, they fight for freedom. Will you? I'd never heard of Helldivers 2, and I definitely hadn't heard of Helldivers 1. No. But this is one of those games which is... The, the 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 marketing is very clever because they've tapped into what the internet likes, which is stuff that's funny. Uh, and all of the... So, so let me just lay this out for you. Have you ever seen the film Starship Troopers? I know you haven't, but think you're in space and you're landing on planets and you've got uh, guns and your mission is to get rid of all the evil insect monster things. Yeah. Now, the insects and the monsters in Starship Troopers look Almost identical to the, the ones in this. The bugs that sort of okay. spring out from the ground and they come and attack you. Okay. So those bugs are taking over the universe from the east side. Right. And on the west side, there's robots taking over the universe. Oh, so they're pretty screwed. Yeah, every, everything's... Gone to, oh, I'm not going to swear there, but I'm not going to. Everything's gone badly. Yes. Now, you're a hell diver, or in this case, a hell diver too, and uh, your mission is to fight back and, li- and Save li- the world. liberate these planets that have been Save attacked. Save the world. But the thing that's funny that's gone viral is that they call it managed democracy. What? <laughs> so, and they go, your characters... Sometimes I feel like we live in a world of managed democracy. Well, it's, it's really... Robots really... to the west. <laughs> what is Bugs it? to the Bugs east. To the right. Here, Here I, I am. am. <laughs> <laughs> but what's so funny is that your characters land on the planet and then as you're shooting these bugs you know, to high heaven, yeah, yeah. you're going, I'm liberating this. <laughs> Prepare to be liberated. I want a fair democracy. <laughs> I'm spreading democracy across the universe. So, uh, and every time your character dies, because you get five lives per mission, you're, it's a new person. Right. And the tra- anyway, the training mission sets this all up. And Whoever created this must have had a good sense of humour. I've got, have a listen. This is part of the training mission. Prove to yourself that you have the strength and the courage to be free. Join the Helldivers. Become part of an elite peacekeeping force. See exotic new life forms. And spread managed democracy throughout the galaxy. So you kind of get the vibe. It's like very, yeah. very funny. Yeah. But also it's a very fun bit of gameplay. So it's a third person shooter. So that means that you can see your character holding the guns. I prefer that. Which I, mu- I, I yeah, love games I like do. this. And there just aren't enough of them. Yeah. The problem is that it's supposed to be four player co-op. Although you can play on your own. And the, because it's so over popular, the servers are struggling to hook people oh, up with really? other players. So I, even though I've played this quite a bit, I still haven't managed to play with anyone else. Because it's so popular. It's, well also there's servers have got problems and... So I have been managing democracy on my own. 
across the universe. <laughs> and I've been liberating. And how's that been going? Yeah, not well. It's oh. a game that you really need to play with other people. Right. Uh, so for that reason, I'm. I know that they're struggling to keep up with the demand because they never thought it would be this popular. But it is such an essential part of the experience, and you can't. You start off with rubbish guns, and you get better and better. And there's a there's a paid for game pass that thankfully you don't really have to bother with. You can just get all the good stuff that you need with the normal one. Thirty five quid, so it's quite That's cheap, good. and it's on PC and PlayStation, and you can cross play, so you can play oh, with. Oh, I a, love this. But I just wish that they'd sort the matchmaking out. But I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that because it's so cheap and because it's so funny and epic, it's like a 9 out of 10 and it will be a 10 as soon as they fix the matchmaking. Spread managed democracy throughout the galaxy. There's one more I'm going to harp on about just very quickly and then you can take over with your reviews because <laughs> you've got some really cool ones. But this one is called Silent Hill, The Short Message. Maybe I can be like her. Dream? Now, Silent Hill is a horror game which a lot of people would have played uh, back in the day. It's really scary. Right, and this game is actually... The original is extremely scary. But this game, it's like a, a huge demo. So it's about two hours long. It's okay. got a lot of uh, tough subject material, shall we say. The characters having a bit of a breakdown and texting people who don't exist and stuff like that. Beautiful graphics. There's a moment where you walk into a room, a bit like Alan Wake, actually, or like Control. Remember mm, Control that we played? That Lots of game. notes on the wall that say, we hate you, we think you're ugly, we think you're rubbish, and the whole wall is papered with post-it notes, and the graphics in that section are just unbelievable. It's dubbed into English, so that's okay. The, the lips don't match the voices on the cutscenes. I, I didn't mind it because that's fair enough. You can't necessarily expect them to remake all of that. There's a chase sequence which would have scared the life out of you. There's this evil thing. And is, that, is that what I heard the other day when I heard you scream? That was me screaming like a little yeah. uh, person. <laughs> <laughs> I was running away from this monster. And then it's all... Because it's a demo, you can't be too critical. And because it's free, it's, it's a free. lot of fun for two hours. That's cool. yeah. And it makes... It does, I think it achieves its purpose, which is to make you want to play the next Silent Hill game, which is coming out at some point. So this is a teaser. It's a teaser, but it's like a full, it's a full story within itself. Do many games do this? Not to this extent. But no, it was really good, and it does the job of getting you want, excited about the next game. How? Why? I, I know why they do it, game developers, because it's a great tease, as you say, to buy the next game. But isn't it a costly way of doing it? it yeah, it, it's a gamble, <laughs> you for know, sure. For free, to make a, it's a lot I, of time and effort. I suppose the, the way they've saved money is it's mostly, apart from one bit, it's all set indoors. So you've okay. only got to... And the, you do a lot of repeating around the same area. But with horror games, oh my God, there's a bit that really scared the life out of me. I walked into a room and there was a doll sitting on a shelf. I hate dolls. And I hate dolls. And f so far in the game, quite early on, not really a lot has happened. It's just dark. And this doll's head just fell off. <laughs> and I absolutely... Uh, what can I say on a podcast? Yeah, I, I, yeah things things left my body. And then, <laughs> but then when I went in the room, because the, you come around back there, it was there it's back on. the head was back on. Oh, oh my no, God, I was dying. No, I, was, I, was no, like, I almost had to stop. No, no. Uh, Sounds good though. What it's good. Give, what would you give it out of 10? It's like 8 out of 10. For, for a free game. For a free game. game That's you know, awesome. Give it a shot. I think it's well worth it. Oh, what's it available on? Just PlayStation. Okay. Um, but like I say, it's free. Wow. Over to you with a game from both Ooh. of our childhoods. Ooh. I'm so excited. So it's Tomb Raider Remastered 1, 2 and 3. Oh, where, where to start? I mean, where to start? <laughs> you, What was weird about this was you were like, oh yeah, there's a treasure over here, oh, there's a health pack over there, this is where the wolves <laughs> jump out, this is where the thing... It, you just knew it's all like, of the game. What's weird is that, have you noticed, like when you need to like revise for something, like your GCSE science or your theory test, it never quite sticks... But like I can to this day, I know exactly where the wolves are going to jump out at you yeah. in Tomb Raider, and I also know all the lyrics to Waterfalls by TLC. You wow. know, it just never. It Was never that in the game as well? <laughs> no, it's like, in wolves. Know, and you know what? This is a great bit of nostalgia. Like it's literally as you remember. Oh, there's a cool feature, so you can switch between how you remember it back in the day. 
back in the day, in like the 1990s, when it was all like kind of really clunky and a bit sharp, sharp edges, and sometimes you could kind of walk through walls. I mean, who did? Who, who doesn't like that? <laughs> or you can switch, you can toggle to the remastered version yeah. and everything looks smooth and beautiful and nice. Um, it's literally the, the game you all remember, but just a bit better. I actually like playing it with the original graphics because it was slightly brighter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could actually see where you were headed a little bit more, mm-hmm. but they did such a great job of remastering it. Like yeah. It just looks a lot better. Yeah. Lara Croft looks better. Everything's better. The only thing I'd say is... The controls are quite difficult and fiddly because if you use the analog sticks, I was playing this on the Switch, if you try and like turn right and jump at the same time, it doesn't quite do it. it. So you have to jump back, jump back. Oh, okay. Press it at the right time. And it it took me about 10 minutes just to do a really simple task of like trying to get up. Well, that's the the game difficulty comes not from the game being difficult, but from the the controls. controls. We've actually got a bit of you playing Tomb Raider when it, we first downloaded it. I'd say, like, so far, it brings me some nostalgia. And it has been remastered quite well. Yeah, it does look good. Oh, this is a bit... Oh. They've, definitely oh. made, they've definitely made her look like Angelina oh, Jolie. Oh, sugar! All the platforms fell down. Yeah. I don't think I can get back on there. No. See, I used to be good back in the day. How times have changed. <laughs> They force you to to just do sections over and over again because they're such bad controls. Now, this is also available on the PS5, and I wonder if I played it on the PS5, I might find it easier. Maybe Let me tell you. Is... I played oh, it on right, the PS5. Okay. <laughs> uh, no. They do have a, an option in this game, though, for modern controls, but even those aren't like what you would want it so to be. Wh- why, why, why is it so difficult compared to... I think that, so. People online have described these controls as tank controls. So Lara yes, Croft is like a tank, yes, and you're like, exactly. Walk up to the edge, slowly reverse yeah, backwards. Yeah, you know, yeah. run, jump, make sure you press the grab button. Yeah. Oh no, you've missed. Try like do do it all again. It slows the game down, and like it's such a classic game, and it's still. But we must have put up with that. Well, yeah, because we had nothing else to do back then. Now I've got other stuff to do. The games are better and more so. I think one of the other things I noticed is that there's no map and there's no guide on what on earth you're supposed to do. Yeah. Like back in the day, that was cool because you'd sort of all sit around as a group and uh, like the brain trust would kind of go, what's the next move <laughs> yes. for Lara? Have you yeah. discovered this treasure? Or you're supposed to press that button over yeah. there. Whereas, yeah. and watch out for the bear, you know. Whereas now, you just need a button that's like, yeah. tells you where to go. It's still scary though, right? Very scary. Oh, the music. The music's really good. <laughs> but also, my my Never leaves you. childhood. My biggest scare from my childhood. Forget Silent Hill. My biggest scare was uh, like all the pots and pans and things. They wrote in the old version. They rotate to face Lara Croft. Yeah. And there was a a mummy tied to a chair. What, from what I remember. Yeah. And then when you walked around it, it followed you around the room. Oh. So I thought it was alive. I actually, on the PlayStation, I went back and found it. Did you? Yeah. And I've got footage of it. Oh my and goodness. it is appallingly terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, it's like, I why st- is it moving? I still find the butler terrifying, though. Do he you? He just follows you around the house. It's creepy. Anyway, I would give it... Go on. Now. There's three games here, remember. So you've got Tomb Raider 1, 2 and 3 remastered. But it's all, you know, it's all the same kind of thing. Give it an 8 out of 10. Oh, wow. What? So losing just the two points for the controls? For the controls. Because I suppose that's what they that's were it. like. Wow. Yeah. So 22 to £25, pounds, which is a lot of game for your money. Uh, it depends on what console, but it is on Switch, PlayStation. It's on lots of different platforms. And PC, which I think is what I played it on originally. Oh, you've got another one as well, haven't you? I've been busy. Go on then. You're playing this one this morning, actually. Yes. Mario versus Donkey Kong. Hey now, that dastardly Donkey Kong is making off with the mini Mario toys. I guess it's up to our main man Mario to get him back in Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Now, I was extremely excited about this one. Why? Because it sounds like an well, obviously I like an Mario and game. I like Donkey Kong. And this is the crossover. And I thought, I was in my head, I kind of was expecting, like, you know, like Kirby. Well, both of them, in Donkey Kong... Famously, it's a side-scrolling platformer. Right. And Mario is obviously a side-scrolling, mostly. That, I was, that's what I was expecting. Bit of but, both maybe of with, but maybe with the graphics of Kirby, because Kirby's, like, beautiful. Mm. No. Not at all. It's basically like a puzzle a puzzle piece. I didn't realise that this 
game series, which has been going for 20 years, mm. originally came out in 2004 on the Game Boy Advance. And this is oh, a remake of the well, Game Boy Advance everything. game. Now, they're doing this a lot, aren't they, at the moment? Yeah. Did you ever play, um, was it Mickey Mickey's Haunted Hotel or Mickey's Haunted House or something like I'm, that? I'm vaguely aware of it, but not... Oh, no, no, it wasn't, um, it wasn't the Haunted Mansion one. It was the Magic Wands one. Oh, what, Mickey? <laughs> Mickey Mouse Magic Wands for Game Boy Color. It's literally like that. Okay. So, because we've often talked about games which you want to be able to pick up and put down if you've got kids mm-hmm. in this day and age. I know lots of people talk about, you know, what are some of the ones you could dip in and out to. Is this that kind of game? Yeah, I mean, it's it doesn't exactly sound like that. it's that fun though. No, with the puzzles. Is that the problem? Because it's, it's the same. It's the same old thing. You kind of come out of a door and you've got to press buttons and levers to kind of um, move steps and ladders about and try and collect the different toys. But it's, you're, you're all in one room and it's just a puzzle. And once you've solved that puzzle, you go to the next puzzle. And there's just loads and loads in a row. Yeah, and you and you kind of, you know, in each area, in each different level, you, you gain a new skill. So, you know, you'll be able to throw uh, baddies in the air. You'll be able to, like, swing across to a different platform. You learn different skills. But, I mean, apart from that, that's about it. Will it surprise you to know that it's £40? What? Yeah. No, don't waste your money. <laughs> Buy Tomb Raider instead. Much better. <laughs> Well, there we go. We're done again. I've got uh, another game that's just arrived today as we record this. Uh, oh, yeah. It's the release of Final Fantasy VII Ooh. Rebirth, which is not a remake because there's Final Fantasy VII Remake, but it's yeah. like a reimagining of the game. Uh, that's all I really know about it. The graphics oh, are right. just as good. I'm super excited. It's, yeah. It's 150 gigabytes. What? <laughs> so it's downloading now on the PlayStation. Like As we speak, it's downloading. Oh, Probably be goodness. downloading all day before I get to play. But I'm, wow. I'm excited for that, and I'm also excited for Helldivers 2, because someone's told me that you can get your Steam Deck, mm-hmm. which I've got, mm-hmm. to mirror the PlayStation so you can play it re- ah. remotely. So you can pl- I can play our PlayStation down the pub. So Not- does that mean you don't have to buy the portal? Well, yeah, but this is the this is the thing. I want a PlayStation Portal, still not in stock, uh, so, which has been good because it's saved me money. But I might not have to buy one if I can Ooh. mirror the screen. Anyway, I'm expe- exploring that, so we we shall see. Watch this space. <laughs> Why not to buy a Portal will be our next episode. Yeah. If if it works, you'll know. <laughs> uh, is that it? Are we done? Yeah, actually, if anybody has bought the Portal, yeah, I'd love to know what it's like. Is it worth it? Is it worth two hundred pounds? My hmm. hard, well-earned cash. It's a good question. <laughs> Let us know. It's at Naked Gaming Pod, and we'll see you next month. Bye. <laughs>